So we are down to the final four in the Dublin Senior Football Championship for 2021. And it's all Southside teams that make up the semi-final lineup this Saturday evening with both games live on RT. You've got Barry Bowden, St. Enders up against Kip McCook Crokes and St. Jude's against Lucan Sarsfield. To look ahead to these games, I am delighted to be joined by former Dublin footballer and Kip McCook Crokes manager, Johnny McGee. Johnny, how was the format yourself? Yeah, good, yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks for having us on, yeah. Um... Looking forward to the weekend, obviously. Um, should be two good, good games of football. Yes, just looking at it, like from the Dublin Club Championship, I haven't really got around to seeing many games this weekend or this season so far. Would have followed the quarterfinals on Twitter quite a lot. The high score nature of these kind of uh, games seems to be the thing that kind of stands out the most. You had Lucan beating Belly Moon 116 to 18 points, Jude's beating Thomas Davis 314 to 15 points, a lot of high-scoring games as well in the group stages. It does seem as if it's been a very, very open in terms of side of play Dublin Championship this year. Yeah, look, it's been very enjoyable in fairness. Um, I enjoy the attacking nature of of the Championship so far. I would have, you know, a lot of teams are going out and, and asking questions um, of any opposition that's ahead of them, which is great to see. You know, um, you know they're still kind of organised defensively, but I think they've kind of thrown the shackles off and been more um, offensive, and which is great to, to, for the game and for spectators, you know. Um, and look, the scores that they're tallying up has been very, very good. So, look, it's great to see that, you know, there's been a big shift in terms of the you know, offensive side of the game, which is what, what people want to go and see, and, and it's what you want to go and have your uh, – you want to coach your kids to, to play that style of football, you know. Um, to not be afraid to, to take chances to, to create scores and not be afraid to give away a ball or, 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 or kick a ball away or a hand pass away because of you're trying to take a chance on a 60 40 kick pass or hand pass. So, yeah, look, it's been brilliant and it's been very entertaining, um, you know, and long may it continue, you know. And how important is as well the fact that the club championship so far this year has been of high standards, say for players that Desi Farrell will be looking out mm -hmm. for because for the first time probably since 2012, preaching Gavin. You know, for once, the Dublin management are actually looking for players to come in to the setup and not just to kind of maintain the standards, but actually now to get them back to where they were and take them a step further, as opposed to, you know, kind of keep everything going as it was the last couple of years, but they're not being our Ireland champions. Yeah, no, obviously, you look at there's a chance to have an Ireland for fellas to put themselves in the shop window, you know, um, and club championship. Um, it predicted Dublin Cup Championship is of a high calibre, you know. Um, like, I know when, back to when I was playing, a lot of guys were brought into the Dublin panel um, for the form that they show during the Club Championship. So, you know, and there's been a big turnover in terms of players that have moved on over the last year or two um, well, since Desi's taken over. So, look, yeah, there's there's definitely uh, room for more players to, to, get, to, to, to be brought into the panel, So, which is kind of great for Desi. Um, you know, where you'd see kind of players that are who are relishing in the club championship. And that's what you want, you know, you know, uh, players like perform well in Dublin Cup football and, you know, if they perform well for a club, you know, and they have that bit of belief and then it's carrying up a bit of momentum into then if they're brought into a panel, which is what you want, you know. Um, like there's been many, uh, a lot of players that I play with that were brought into Dublin panel were coming off back of good you know, club campaigns, you know. Um so look, yeah, it's not it's not a foreground conclusion where teams are a lot of few players are coming through the obviously development squads, but look it's it's more um you know when lads are shown it you know performing very well against the likes of the same some say county footballers for Dublin who have won a few all Irelands and they're setting their stall out and they're probably winning uh, that kind of battle. You know, it's food for tough for Desi, you know, which is great to have, you know, where it's just healthy competition, particularly look the fact look in terms of you know, the strength of, uh, people would say, the strength of our uh, of the Dublin's bench, probably not as strong as it used to be, but, but look, come here, you're just looking for fellas to put their hands up and to, for, for, for them to be included, you know? Yeah, we might maybe touch on some players who could potentially catch in the eye of Desi Farrell as we go on later on in this chat as we look through the two semi-finals. I suppose the one that's obviously going to catch the interest from your own point of view the most and closest to the heart is the meeting of Barry Bowden and Kim McCook Crokes, the 2019 champions against the 2018 champions. Barry Bowden made fairly light work at Castanock, it has to be said, in the quarter final. It was a fairly close opening quarter, but they really kind of pulled away in the second water break. I think six unanswered points in a row. And then, you know, second half goals from Aaron Walters and substitute Kieran O'Reilly. So I was never really looking major danger. 
towards the end, where it was a different story for uh, your own native Kim McCudden in, in their quarter final against Nafina. Looked in good position at half time, four points up. Dara Mullins there to go, but Nafina, you know, with the quality side that they are, they produce a very spirited second half, come back and, you know, need a lot of real leaders to step up in that game, the likes of uh, Dan O'Brien, Keen O'Connor kicking crucial scores, and, and Rory O'Carroll was ever present at the back. Yeah, no, look, listen, um, it was it was great to, for, for Kim O'Cud for the lads to get that kind of win. You know, it was a hard fought game. You know, Nafina were, you know, came out in the second half. I think they needed it. Um, I felt, you know, look, like I suppose Vince has caused them a few problems in the, in the the early groups uh, matches, um, and I think they kind of sorted that out. Um, but like the the their last group match against Ballantyre, like it was just it was uh, unfortunately look Ballantyre didn't show up on the on the evening and they won by twenty odd points, and so it wasn't a great um, way of kind of getting prepared for Nafina who were a quality side and who had already beaten him in the league final. Um so yeah, look, yeah, a few of the younger lads, well, like like the Dan and Kane have stepped up and look, Rory was rolling back the years, which is great to see, you know, so um fair play to Rory. Um but look, yeah, look, there's it's a it's a it's a big step up now um from from the last day. You know, Nafina are quality side, but uh Bally Bowden are battle hard now at this stage. Um, you know, uh one Dublin, obviously, you said there in 2019, one Leinster as well, and uh, probably should have f- felt they would have left an all behind them. So, yeah, look, it's it's definitely going to be an intriguing match. So, looking forward to it, you know. Yeah, and Barry, talk about the mention there about Ballantyre St. John's you know, not showing up. Barry Bolton would probably echo the same views about their performance in the county final last year against Barry Munster. So they'll have goals to banish. I suppose the big thing, though, everyone wants to know about with, with Kid McCook Crokes is, is Paul Mannion. I suppose, one, how was he playing? And two, is there any kind of change in his mindset in terms of would he be interested in getting involved in, back in the count, inter county game? Listen, look, Paul's, Paul's a fabulous footballer. Um, Paul is his own man, you know, and always has been. Um, you know, he's he's um, he's been playing good football um, for Kim McCook. Probably not getting on the score in the, the last day. And I think. You know, for me, you know, I would if I'm, I find defending Paul Mannion the, the further away from the goal that he is, the happier I would be as a defender. So, like, in order for for um, you know, I, I believe Paul's better as as a bear threat closer to, to to goal. But look, if you look at it, the other lads around the forward line have chipped in and play or were playing well, like Darren Mullen, Shane uh, Horn, um. Know, Shane Cunningham, um, and Tom Fox and stuff. So is the is the fact that Paul, you know, could be pulling them out, uh, uh, drifting out a small bit to pull maybe one or two players with him to create those pockets of space. You know, that's where I'd be looking at. You know, to exploit that. So look, they, there's been a lot of lads have chipped in with good scores, but um, you know, Paul in terms of you know getting for us, I think Paul closer to the goal is a lot more of a threat and probably be more of a headache to Bally Bowden rather than being forever to fail. So look, uh, um, I, I would hope, look, uh, Paul, uh, you know, Paul is on Christmas quality. So for me, if he's closer to the goal, be more of a threat. Um, and he's lucky, he's such a good finisher and such a good goal taker, you know. Um, I think that's the one thing that, you know, goals win games. You know, we played Bally Bowden a, uh, a couple of times, you know, in 2018 and we played him in the first or group match championship, played him in the league and then played him again in the semi-final. Um, you know, we bet them or, and then they came back the following year and they won uh, in 2019 and as you said, alluded to there, they would have been very disappointed in how they uh, conducted themselves um, in the final last year against Bally Moon. So, um, yeah, look, in terms of Paul with Dublin, look, listen, if you have Paul Mannion, Stephen Cluxon and Jack McCaffrey on that bench or in involved in that team, I think we have a different conversation in terms of who the All-Ireland champions would be, you know. Um, and that's not taking any slight from the fellas that are there or like but it's the same if you were to if those three lads are there and you were to take out uh, James McCarthy, you know, Kieran Kilkenny and Conor Callan, it would still be the same impact at the trade. So look, it just goes to show you, you know, um and then particularly look at the turnover players like, you know, like Brent uh, Brennan Mack and Michael Darren McCauley and all these guys, Kieran Keane O'Sullivan and stuff, you know, um, uh, uh, Brennan Brogan. So the teams had to prepare kind of for the f- their first 15 that they were playing and then they had to prepare then for the lads who were coming off the, off the bench. So 
I think that's where kind of the strength and depth is kind of let them down small bit, you know, from that point of view. But I'm um, at Paul Mannion back in Dublin. I love to see it. I hope to see it um, as a dog man, as a club man of his, you know, look, it'd be great to see him back in his jersey. But look, come here, Paul is Paul. And look, he owes nothing to Dublin. Uh, so look, if he if he wants an extended break, look, he, uh, he deserves it. If he doesn't come back and play for Dublin, look, it'd be disappointing. But look, he, he owes nothing for, to the jersey and fairness to the kids, you know. Yeah, the, could you see any of the, them three names that you mentioned there being back involved with Dublin? I know, fair enough, Stephen Cluxon is not far off touching 40 this day. So he, in, in many situations, you think he's not even finished playing club football this day. But you, you touched on, like, Paul Mannion, why he's not maybe left off of the Dublin jersey, and Jack McCaffrey, very much the same opinion. They're both still only 28 years of age. Like, you'd think there's, you know, plenty more years of inter-county football in them. Uh, look, absolutely. Look, the two lads are quality. Look, Cluxon... Clucko, I know he might be throwing a 40, but Clucko's really probably only 30, 31 in his in his head. And, and in terms of the mindset, you know, he's such a he's such a great character and and on what he brings to the to the setup, you know. It was that kind of culture and environment that was needed. And look, Clucko was the spearhead of that group with on a uh, on a Gilroy when, when they won it in 2011. Like and look, let's like but I think it was the it was the hurt that Clucko would have experienced that, for those years with myself and then after I finished, you know, those years of, you know, when Kerry Bettas hammered us out the gate, you know, in a couple of semi-finals in Toronto. So, you know, I think, um, you know, Clucko, he might in age, you know, might be 40, but in the head, in his head, I'd say he still only thinks he's a young fella. So, look, it'd be great to have him back, you know. But look, it's, you, you just don't know, like... Whatever the issues are, or whatever, if, oh, there's so many rumors going around. You know, at the end of the day, look, I mean, would you like to see the three boys back in the Dublin jersey? You know, because you know, I, I, I'd like to think that they wouldn't want to finish up. I, I'd say the three lads. There's not too many lads get away with the fairy tale ending. The likes of Alan Brogan, who had a fairy tale ending. I'm sure the three lads. Look, it'd be great to see them finish off with winning all Ireland and then saying good luck, see you later. So one, one or two more wouldn't, wouldn't wouldn't be any harm, you know. But that's not for the rest of the, the rest of the country. That's just me being a dub anyway. Yeah. I just finally on this game before we might touch on the other semi final. Stephen Cluxon, we talked about him being one man in his late thirties still going strong. Another one, and I've seen him he was heavily involved in, in a group state victory for, for Barry Bowden. and Colin O'Keeney, like he's someone obviously that you would have played with and I suppose his early days when he burst onto the scene in the early two thousands, obviously went on to be a very good dual player with Dublin. But you just look at the likes of him, Simon Lambert, another player who was a great stalwart for the Dublin Hurlers down to the years. They're both still going so strong for Barry Bowden in, in both codes. Like Conal Keeney only retired this time last year after Dublin exit the Winter Championship in Harlan. As I say, like he's someone that you would probably know of from his early days from playing for Dublin. Again, I'd say he's probably you're not probably not surprised to see him going so strong. Ah uh, no, look, listen, Conal is a, is a, is a, is an unbelievable Joe Joe player, but. Post unbelievable horror and footballer, you know. Um, the one thing I have to say about Connell is like is in terms of his mindset and his re- resilience, you know, to keep persevering and like to, to cover two bow codes like that, you know, it's hats off to him. And look, the thing is, if if you're not marking Colin Keeney tight, he's gonna punish you. Um, and credit to him the last day he did pretty uh, very well. So Look, he's going to need minding. Uh, and like, you know, at Lambo there, it's, it's similar. Like he, look, another, another huge stalwart. Like the one thing that that, I suppose, um, the, like the, this uh, Bally Bowden side, they've got a, a leaders in each line. Um, and it's like there's no, start, like both teams know each other pretty well uh, at this stage. Um, like there'll be no surprises, you know, um, It'll be a, a bit of a, a bit of a war of attrition, you know. That the, you know, in the last week or so, um, even the ground is, and the amount of rain has softened up, so the ground won't be as hard as the la- as the quarterfinals. It'll be, be softer. So look, Collins a class act, and he need a bit of mining. Like Rory, the last day he had a fantastic, a fantastic performance. You know, he would he be my 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 one to pick up Connell. You know, in terms of. Strengths, you know, I think Rory probably be the one, one, one player, one of one of our only few players in Dublin that could probably handle King Connell as strength wise, you know. So look, it'll be interesting to see what way the matchups are on on, on Saturday evening, you know. So we're looking forward to. It. Yeah, I think 
given the personnel and individuals on both, both sides, I think it has the makings of being a cracking game. And hopefully, if the weather holds up, it can even make it a, a better spectacle on Saturday night. The other semi final uh, sees Luke and Sarsfield against St. Jude. I think it's fair to say Luke can have been a major surprise package this year. The cause probably one of the upsets of the county championship or any county championship in Ireland this year when they knocked out Bally Mun the last day, 116 to 18 points. They were six points up at one stage, signed the true champions, Bally Mun. Never threw in the towel. Looked to force extra time to appear. Dean Rock freeze, but Leitrim man Brenda Gallagher stepped up. Now I don't know how accurate you can go off Wikipedia, but if it is to be believed, if they win on Saturday, they'll be in their first county final since eighteen ninety six. So I don't think anyone was alive to remember that. And then you got um, Saint Jude. It's probably similar enough in the terms of profile to Luke, and they wouldn't have really any major star names. I suppose Kevin McMenamin will be the main player across the two teams that we well known, but. They have been a very, very consistent club team for the last couple of years. They played against Kibbeco in the final when you were manager in 2018, and they've always been at the business end pretty much since. Yeah, look, the um, Jules are probably the most cons- one of the most consistent teams in Dublin Championship. Like I think was it was it you read something about them that they're this is their ninth semi final in ten years or something like that, eight or ninth semi final in in, in 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 nine or ten years. So. Look, that's a huge amount of consistency in terms of getting to that stage. But look, the thing is, you know, the it's that kind of is the the scenario where they've put themselves in a situation and they haven't kicked on. So, uh, you know, so they will both teams in terms of like you know, Jules have been in the business end of of it for so long, for so many years. You know, do, does that still bear in the back of their mind in terms of you know? Trying to get to another county final and will they will they win when they lift that cup, you know? So like that's a that's a bit of baggage that they have as well. But um like Lucan, nothing to lose. Um some fabulous football the last day against uh Bally Moon, you know. Bally Moon looked a bit tired and Lucan looked fresh and hungry. Well, you know, I can't say enough about a team a team who wants it more or, or has hunger and desire to be in opposition. Um, you know, we're in a similar situation ourselves where we won in 18 and we're being with Thomas Davis in 2019. No disrespect to David, Thomas Davis. We're like, you know, we were, we we're hot favorites and basically went out and we didn't perform. Um, and they wanted it. They were hungry. They wanted it more than us. I felt, um, and I'm, I'm sure the, any of the lads will tell you that they would have felt very disappointed with, with, you know, um, that performance that day. So like, it's 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 all to play for, you know. Um, Lucan will gain huge amount of confidence from the last day, and like when I felt with the last day, look, I suppose look, there's two sides who are like you know, Barry Moon. Look, they kind of faltered through the the, the group stages of the the club championship. weren't playing uh, anywhere near to what they were last year. You know, they looked kind of a toy again. They were look, they were missing couple of, uh, of them better footballers as well um, and didn't have it seemed like they didn't have their best team out at any one stage you know there was always still fellas missing like Philly was missing the last day you know um, so look as you said there look as as the calibre of the team that they read look they didn't go down without without a fight they just about missed it you know, or missed out on, on getting it uh, drawn again but I just felt during the course of that game I felt Luke and Found it a lot easier to get their scores, whereas Ballymun had to fight to, to try and get great to get that scores. Whereas Lucan played a nice brand of football, very very fast, and um, which kind of you know probably caught Ballymun by surprise. But look, the surprise package, uh, you know, the bit of surprise is gone now, and there's no better team to, to have their homework done than Jude's. The one thing I have to say about Jude's for their consistency, they always do their homework and they always know about going about their game plan, you know, but what I'd say about Luke and Art or Jules would be is that they probably need to kind of go with the side of uh more freedom in terms of getting uh getting uh, trying to get more scores on the board and uh, but look it looks like they're, they're spreading their scores across the across the team which is is what you want was what you want, you know. Um so the last day they did a few spread of scores as well. So look it, it's it's a uh, it's gonna be a different one, different one to call but I just think maybe Jules, in terms of the experience and and uh, you know what they've over the last accumulated over the last nine ten years, you know I think that hunger and desire you know just might just shade for them and the small bit of experience or a bit more of experience in 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 that situation. But look, listen, Jules have nothing to lose or Luke have nothing to lose. A lot of good young lads, then uh, off 
they were no fear factor. You know, there's no. I've been. I've look, looking at playing on a couple, uh, Croke's teams that were very young and won a won a championship or two. You know, um, with, with young lads and the fear when they've no fear or, you know, it's about playing, enjoying their football. You know, as you get older, it's a kind of fear of you know making sure you're you're not making mistakes or you know uh, and your bounce back ability. Whereas younger lads just kind of water off ducks back and go and play. You know. It's no surprise you actually find a tough game to call because they're actually in the same group this year and the opening round of games they actually drew each other one fourteen each. So again, I think all indications will point to the fact that this will be another close game. Another interesting thing, obviously, that I mentioned in the introduction there, all four semi finalists are from the south side. Repeat similar situation happened, I think, back in, in twenty nineteen when it was Barry Bowden, St. Jude's, Thomas Davis and Kim McCook Crokes. We had an old South Side final in twenty eighteen. Is the kind of trajectory of Dublin Gaelic football changing? Because traditionally, you would have also said the north side making up stronger pockets of the starting team. I know we've seen it even been touched on the Hurling show here. Like There hasn't been a north side winner in that competition, I think, since the 2000s. So like the south side has always traditionally been stronger in Hurling. But is now the bigger ball also becoming much more dominant on the south side of the River Liffey? Yeah, um, I suppose you're looking at the... I suppose the bigger clubs are you know the culture structures within a lot of a lot of the clubs on the south side are, are, are very good and and the volunteers uh you know of of developing you know the, the underage teams and and you know the, a lot of the big clubs have got are, are putting you know former players and co and, and coaches that have won stuff back into the juvenile teams and which is bearing fruit and you know, you could see it in terms of the quality of of the the four teams that are in and now off Southside, and it's been a common thing, as you said there, over the last few years. So, look, um, and then look, you look at it, look, Plunkett's um, been uh, going to the uh, senior two, and then Vincent's like you know, the only one in all learning there was a four or five years ago, um, and they're they were relegated to, to to senior two. So, there's a small bit of a shift and change, but look. It swings and roundabouts, you know. So look, I'd say you probably look at it like Nafina are 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 close enough, you know. So look, and Ballymun, look, I can't see that being the last of Ballymun. I'd say there's probably another kick in Ballymun again before that team probably gets a bit a bit too old. But look, that's in fairness to Ballymun, it was the younger lads, the the newer lads that probably performed the best for them this time around, you know. So look, um. It's yeah. Look, it's what well, is it a concern? Uh, I I don't think so. Not yet. But but look, um, I think the you know as I said to you already. Look, it, it comes and goes. Like you know, like uh, Northside were so dominant for so long. You know, uh, particularly when I before I uh, when I started senior football. You know, there was Aaron Zoyles and Vincents and Barry Munns and 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 uh, these teams that were, you know, that were kind of being at to the forefront. You know, so. Look, it'd be interesting to see how it pans out. But yeah, look, I think uh, I think it's not going to change too much over the next few years because look, those teams are in the semi final. They have got a lot of good, lot of great under uh, structure uh, underage, and uh, look, they're just kind of um, you know refilling the well, so to speak, in terms of you know talents. You know, so look, um, as a south sider, it's great to see. But look, I'm sure north siders won't be too happy with it. But um, but look, at me at the end of the day, we're all dubs. <laughs> I was waiting for that small bit of bias that was eventually going to kick in there. But like again, it just kind of shows how much things swing around that like, you know, hurling football now become popular in areas that maybe would have been more associated with other sports on the south side. Just of course, yeah. a reminder as well to subscribe to our Patreon for a five euro a month where you get all the audio content and exclusive content. So if you're out for a run or for a jog or for a walk and even, it makes it much more easier to listen to stuff. And of course, you can also subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. We've passed 9,000 now, so it'd be great if we could hit the 10K mark because the channel is just up and running just over two years. Just finally, of course, uh, Johnny as well, of course, from your own kind of family point of view, Lauren has been very much flying the flag over the last couple of years with the Dublin ladies team. Very similar story to the men's this year. Uh, would have suffered like a lot of the Dublin men's players of her first kind of sense of heartbreak, losing the final to Mead. People would have seen as well. She was over with the Melbourne Kangaroos along with... Um, Sinead McGoldrick and the other Dublin player's name has escaped Neve McAvoy, uh, Neve, Neve McAvoy uh, back in the winter time what is her plans uh, does she plan to go back over again for the winter oh, she's, she's, on, she's, she's actually over there um, she flew out there a few weeks ago so she's over for her second season so um, yeah so she 
Pinel quarantined there a week ago. She look, she was looking at the, the circumstances changed over there in terms of quarantine and stuff. So she only ended up end up doing I think eight days of the fourteen. So they're they're the whatever way the vaccine rolled out and their their different um COVID restrictions were lifted a small bit. So she only had to do the eight, so she was skipping out out the hotel room delighted. So yeah, it looks herself and Goldie are over, Snake Goldrick are over there this year for the season. So yeah, look, yeah, she's look looking forward to it. Um probably looking forward to it a little bit more this year because look last year they um she won they won the All Ireland in uh, on December twentieth. She was due to fly out the day after Stevens Day. That was put back because of COVID. So she flew out the second week in January, and then she had to do two weeks quarantine. And then literally as she came out of quarantine, the season started the following week. So literally she only had a week of training in AFL. Um and look, she was learning on her feet. And like a fairness to her, look, she not not being boys for me being her dad, but then for a uh, credit to herself, the fact that she was able to I think play in around was it nearly seven or eight games, you know, out of a fourteen game calendar. Um you know, it was credit to her because she hadn't played a game whatsoever. So look, I think this time around she's looking forward to the fact that she got a full pre season underneath her uh, underneath the belt and spoke with her yesterday and she was um she was a bit tired and a bit, a, a bit stiff after um, a heavy uh, session the day before. So they did a, a, lot of, a big gym session. So look, yeah, enjoying, enjoying the, the aspect of playing kind of, you know, semi-professional. So look, she's uh, she's enjoying it. So hopefully, look, she'll, she'll, um, she'll get a bigger run this year, fingers crossed. You know, all going well. Yeah, and how much does it make a big difference as well that she still will be around for the business end of the championship when you matter for Dublin and the Ireland series runs around where we say... So unlike the main situation we're seeing today now, it looks like you know Mayo are probably going without one of the most talented players in Oshin Mullen for the next three or four years because it's obviously a longer season for the males over there, rookie contracts and all that as well. Obviously means he can juggle both and obviously would be a, a massive count, a massive loss to the county out west. Yeah, no, look, listen, um, she's lucky in the sense that look at yeah, the 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 season at the moment is she'll be finished. I think by the by the end of April, um, all going well. And then she gets back then, I think, for the tail end of the league and looks forward to the championship. But look, that's going to change then for the 2023 season where all um, the AFL clubs in, in, in Australia will all have a woman's side, a lady's side. So um, it'll it'll be a longer season. So that'll be a different conversation that she'll have to have. But, you know, I think um, she's determined to come back. Um, I, she's... Still hurting over the dollar and lost to, to Mead. I think um, you know, I think it was the it was the mat, like no no not taken away from me. Mead were very good in the day, you know, deserved the the victory thoroughly. Um, but I think uh, Dublin would have felt it probably didn't play anywhere near their, their their best, you know, and probably you know I think that's uh, I think they felt if they had them and play their best and got beaten, then fair enough. But I think there's a bit of kind of a hangover there, which is look, listen, it's, it's a nice thing to kind of. It's a bitter pill to swallow, but you want that kind of uh, bit of motivation there when you come back then to push you on for the last day. I'm sure the girls are, are well. You know, I know when I lost and I didn't, I didn't enjoy the next week or two of the teams being celebrated and what they've done and everything else. It's, it's a, you know, and it was look, um, particularly the Mullinocta situation where we lost to Mullinocta in the last final. You know. I just trying to get away from it. Um, very hard to get away from any of social media and everything else. It was a lot more easier back in my day when I was playing, where it was a newspaper audio to ignore, you know. So, look, it's um, uh, well, look, yeah, look, be interesting to see how they get on. But look, it's fair enough, it'll be um, it's be a different situation for the men, honestly. So, look, you're hoping that you don't want to lose some player, your, your top players to, to, to AFL, but look, you, can, you can't blame them either. Look, it's a, it's a massive opportunity to play professional sport. You know, and also, you know, um, and they're being paid as well, obviously. So, look, it's it's very hard not to 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 encourage your child or any player who wants to express or go out and see and challenge themselves. Uh, you know, at the top top level of sportsmanship. You know. Yeah, I think it's it's a great opportunity if it lands on your doorstep. It's probably just a very very hard one to turn down, and it, it will be very strange, all right? Next year, seeing Dublin and Boko, it's actually been the hunters now in, instead of being the hunted for. First time in a long, long time. Yeah. Johnny, you were fantastic with your time today. Thanks very much for joining us no and hopefully we might chat you again. Fingers crossed. Thanks very much.